Welcome to part two in our three-part series this month on tools and resources when you're in burnout. Three of the biggest problems many of us face during both job and life transitions, often without realizing it, can be, number one, we are already in some degree of burnout from what we've been doing or just finishing, be it a degree, a job, or a project. Problem number two is that at 18, 21, 30, 60, or even 80 years old, we are still autistic and ADHD. And sometimes the people in our life forget that. Problem number three that we can face during transitions in life and job is that we don't pause to acknowledge the pivotal moment and pause the, and acknowledge the power to guide our life during these moments of transition. In today's episode, join me along with my guest, the queen of unstuck, Jackie Corsi. Jackie is passionate about coaching fellow neurodivergent adults and creating a gentle environment for removing the obstacles getting in the way of a better life. And she truly is amazing at helping folks get unstuck. Jackie and I are talking all about the self-care sandwich, as she calls it, what to do if you are starting a transition in your life or job right now, and how to earn an income in the in-between. And we'll wrap up with Jackie sharing what to think about in your first job or in a job transition. Let's get started. I'm on the road to renewally burn out by Got my boots on, ready to start this brand new life. Tired of the hustle, had enough of the grind. With Carol Jean by my side, gonna leave burnout history behind. Woke up this morning with a smile on my face. No stress, no worries, just joy in this place. Carol Jean's podcast got me inspired to let go of the burnout and embrace the fire. In my way to recovery with a happy beat. Carol Jean's words bring me hope they can't be beat. I won't let burn out the me, no, not anymore. Together with Carol Jean, we'll make burn out history for sure. And my amazing guest today is Jackie Corsi. Jackie, welcome to the show. I'm so excited you're here today. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. So when we kicked off our conversation this morning back in the green room, I said, Jackie, what's on your heart? What's happening? What do you really want to talk about? I know we kind of have this outline, this plan. And you said, I want to talk about unemployment, underemployment, and sort of the state of the workplace right now. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, yes, this is huge, especially because we've had a lot of layoffs that have happened. You know, we have a lot of economic shifts that are happening right now. And so many people are navigating burnout more right now than even during the pandemic. The, the rates are higher than anything else we've experienced because we have so much happening in our financial economic world. And that stability, mm -hmm. financial stability is a really big nourishment key for all of us in mm -hmm. living in a modern world, right? I mean, unless you're living off the grid and you have figured out how to like feed yourself and all the stuff, you got to have some money. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's just a great place for us to have a conversation this month. But Jackie, I want to dive in and start with like, give us some context, give us some experience. Mm -hmm. What what has burnout felt like for you when you experienced it in the past? Like number one, because we all have blind spots, we can be burned out for months or years and mm -hmm. or decades. In my case, I was a slow learner, y'all. It didn't pick up real quick. How did you finally recognize? Oh wow, this is burnout, or I'm experiencing burnout. What what has been your burnout experience, Jackie? Okay, as an ADHDer, I find that I get super excited about what I'm doing in my job. And I'll research something to death. And I'll spend the whole weekend on it. I'll get comfortable on the couch and never leave. No one in this space knows anything about what you're saying. You're completely, we don't get it. <laughs> you know, I, I put the lazy boy handle down, you know, to get out of the chair and I limp out and you know i've done nothing with oh, my family so no. and, and i'm you know and and what happens is you know because my favorite thing to talk about and be involved in is autism um when monday comes around and it's time to meet with my clients 
I don't want to see them. I don't want to say that word. I won't read any of my um, emails that have to do with autism. I just um, want to go lay down and sleep and, you know, not be a human. And, and I'll feel like that for, I wouldn't say I've ever gone through decades or even months, but I will go through weeks like that. Like, why am I doing this? You know, what was I thinking? And when I used to be in the nonprofit world before coaching, I did that all the time, getting ready for a special event or board meetings, that kind of raising money. And I would just, I would quit my job every couple of years because I didn't want them to see, you know, what I was not doing well at the file system, you know, executive function, you know, um, problems and running out of energy and realize I cycle through this, that this is just something that I do so I can really relate to my autistic peers and friends and clients that I, I know what burnout feels like. I might, it might not last as long for me, but boy, have I been there. And, you know, you bring up something that's really important and it's the cycle. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, my autistic ADHD self over here, if you look at my mm -hmm. resume, my CV, it looks like it's 10, 20 different people yeah. because I would cycle through different professions and jobs mm -hmm. mainly because of burnout. And yeah. then, you know, I, I would excel and I would do really, really well. And I would be at the top of my field and I would have worked myself into burnout. Right. And then there is this like place, this flip switch. That's just mm -hmm. like, I am so over this. I'm just done. And then it's like, I just can't keep doing it. And then you think it's the job. You don't realize yes. it's you managing yourself necessarily. And it's sometimes a combination of the job and you and your own self-leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just like, okay, I'm so over that. I don't even want to look at it. And then there's sort of like the shame storm and the guilt cycle that comes up like, well, why couldn't I keep doing that? I was really good at it. I used to enjoy it. Why don't I enjoy it now? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh man. So Jackie, you know, you, you, you've now got these places cause you've cycled and you've recognized mm -hmm. this is how burnout shows up for me. It happens every few years to this degree. Right. So when do you start recognizing those big signposts that are saying, pay attention, this is burnout, not just being tired or not just having pushed through for too long. Yeah. And I so don't believe in push to push through if you can avoid it, because those are those little moments. They're going to lead to the big burnout for all of us. Yeah. As oh, yeah. Yeah, folks. oh, yeah. And especially for us as women, because we are going to be doing whatever we do in our work life and then all those other responsibilities that we have. And so I used to depend on the people who loved me to notice and say, well, it's three in the morning and you're a morning person, what are you doing, you know? And now I'm starting, I think I'm such so much more present about it because I'm talking to my clients about, hey, watch out for the burnout, that I'm noticing it about myself now, that I am not brushing my teeth. I'm uh, wearing the same outfit that I wore yesterday and I haven't showered. Um, I haven't eaten anything and if I have, it isn't healthy for me. I um, am limping off of the chair because I sat there too long. Um, I haven't gone to the gym and worked out. All those things that help me be healthy, Jackie, have been uh, left behind because I'm so excited about whatever it is I'm working on and that that does not serve me. And I, one thing that I always think of a, a metaphor for us uh, as, as neurodivergent humans it's like we're a boulder and when we're still, it's hard to get us moving. It's like you're pushing, pushing, you can't, you can't get started. But once we get started, we're rolling down that hill and we can't stop ourselves. And I see that with the people I love and I see that with myself, like, oh my God, one more study. I want to read one more study about this. You know, I want to, you know, what else is there? What else is there? And then pretty, again, you know, the burnout's there if I'm not paying attention. So, oh man, you know, and when we start to like, oh, we could dive into some goodness here, but we're mm -hmm. going to move to our topic in a second. But I, I do have to, I do have to touch this one because it's just so good, yeah. Jackie. And that is 
we get the dopamine hit from the new information. It is fun and yeah. we get addicted to the dopamine hit. So we keep going and we keep digging and we've got the stuff, you know, it's like, and with that sort of the ADHD inertia part of things and that autistic ADHD is like a body at rest stays at rest, body emotion stays in motion. Yeah. It's like, we get the, I call it the freezies. I get the freezies. I get stuck. It's like, I can't get going. Cause I sat here and kind of like allowed myself to downshift. And now I can't yeah. quite like get the momentum. Yeah. To downshift, right. But then it's like, once I get going, I get the dopamine hit and it feels good. It's like all the information and all this stuff. And then you get into like information overload and then you're just like, <gasps> right. And then you're like, okay, I gotta get up. And then it's like, Oh my Lord, I can't even stand up and walk. When was the last time I had water? I've had to pee for two hours. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. Now I'm in the corner sucking my thumb, rocking, and no one can right. it, touch me or talk here, to me. Here's yeah. the level that I've learned around that, yeah. around my for myself. Now yeah. I'm I am speaking totally for Carol Jean here. Mm -hmm. The dopamine hits were fun and they felt good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what I realized in correlation was that that was also the feel-good escape for yeah. the where I was in burnout and experiencing uncomfortable, not feeling good in other yes. areas of my life. Yes. And then got in the loop, it felt good and it was giving me the hit, but then I had hit the point of diminishing return, but I couldn't stop myself. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go do this thing that makes me feel good and not think about those feelings that are upsetting me, that I'm stressed about, whether it's my family or I'm worried about a client or you know a friend, someone's passed away that I love, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't wanna think about that. Um, so if I just stay in this safe little place here, um, it'll. I don't have to think about those things. And I think um, we are not alone in that feeling. I think, I'm glad to learn. No, I'm not. Yeah. Alone. You know, thanks for, thank you for we listening. Humans, so we go there. We go to where the happiness is, right? We go to where we don't feel the pain. So and you know, that's the thing. Burnout, we get into yeah. burnout and it, it feels heavy. It's been hard. It has been a, a task, a chore. It has been that pushing through. It has been <sighs> that all out experience and not feeling safe, not feeling comfortable. And that's where we end up. We end up in burnout. And so by universal law, and I look at this and the unveiling method, and this mm -hmm. has just been the most beautiful place for me to share with other people is the path out is yeah. actually playful. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's light. It's joyful. And when I share that with people, it's usually like such a contrast. And they're like, how the hell? I've only known how to work hard and grind it out to yes. get here. So that's the only way to get. I'm like, no, that's what got you there. Mm -hmm. We have to be something different, someone different. You have to allow possibilities and, and new experiences to get to the place that you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> and I think something we both believe in I've known you long enough that I think I can speak for you on this. You let me know. We are about the joy and about yes. having a life that we love in, you know, family life, uh, friendships, work life, that it's like, might as well have it be fun. And what the heck, right? Why not? I get to choose. No. Is it going to yeah. suck or is it going to yeah. be joyful? Uh, I'm going to start choosing joyful because I've been choosing to suck for yeah. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> when we're working with people, we're, you know, like I'll say, like, I know you've got your goal. You want to get through grad school or you want to get that new job. My personal goal for you, my, I'm, I'm being a little stubborn here and um, I, I want to see you joyful. I want to see you happy. That's what I'm going to hope for, you know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So Jackie, you have a really amazing area specialty. Thank you. Tell everybody who you help and what you do. Yeah. I am a coach for autistic adults and I work with individuals one-on-one -on -one and in groups. And I am there to help you have a joyful life. Um, People come to me either through their parents finding them or they find me or they hear from a friend. And we work together for about 45 minutes at a time, unless we get into that adrenaline high together that we try to stay out of. And I help you get through 
um, having, you know, your, your house feel cleaner or uh, getting that new job, staying in that job, getting ready for a review or a meeting when you're feeling a little nervous. I am there to keep you out of burnout and help you understand the signs of burnout. I work again with a lot of college students and grad students, and we work on, you know, setting up systems so that you remember when you have an exam or when a paper's due and you can keep your energy going through the whole semester. And I am there in something not all of my peers do. I'm there in between sessions. Folks know they can reach me through a text or a phone call. And if you're having some little emergency, they know that I'm here, you know, to help them. I call myself the queen of unstuck, especially if they can't get started on something, we'll body double for a bit. And they're typing away, you know, writing their column for their food, you know, magazine or uh, writing a paper at school, whatever it is. And, um, and I'll be doing my work and we'll just get them unstuck. And um, that. so that's my life. And I, love it. And I, um, and then with group coaching, um, I love getting a group together in a room, even if it's through the zoom room. And when another human being feels understood, like the other day we were talking about those darn, uh, social skills that we need to learn that, you know, that I think is, BS. <laughs> Oh, I, I just so don't believe in it. And I was asking these 20 something year olds, like, what's your opinion of it? And, when they were feeling so understood that like, I, how am I gonna think about how I socialize with someone when I, I'm just trying to get through brunch with all the noise and you know the smells and the, so I'm gonna have to you know, be as polite as I can too and you know, say all the right things and all that kind of stuff. But hearing them in that room together, understanding and, and feeling like, oh my God, you get me? Mm. That is what has kept me in this business uh, for three years now is hearing that sound out of someone's, you know, voice that they are not alone anymore. So that's why I do what I do. Hey there, we are taking a quick break and we'll get back to the conversation in just a sec. Fall is almost here and September is just around the corner. Are you ready for all the events that kick off? Football games, book club meetings, work projects, fall festivals, holiday parties, and more? How does the end of the year usually feel for you? Overwhelmed, exhausted, frustrated, maybe even feeling a bit down when you really just want to enjoy the time with friends and family? Well, if you're ready to enter this season in a whole new way, join me for Whittington Wellbeing's third annual Self-Care September. We'll be teaching you real self-care, not those empty, time-consuming activities like spa days or slapping cucumbers on your eyeballs. I'm bringing you incredible guests like Dan Roth, one of LinkedIn's most influential voices in human-centered people operations, and Kevin Ellerton, the editor-in-chief of Meditation Magazine. This month-long series of live events features tools that take 20 minutes or less to help you recharge. They'll have offering, we'll be offering live classes and on-demand access so that you have access whenever you need it most to boost your energy. Don't miss out. Register today at either whittingtonwellbeing.com or at the link in the show notes below. And let's make this your best fall ever. Now, back to the show. Oh, and it, you guys know you've been following for a minute, a hot minute over here. You know, the number two biggest nourishment key, the biggest energy depleter is belongingness. Not yeah. feeling like we have a place where we belong, mm -hmm. where people get us. We can shorthand the conversation. We don't have to explain it to you, Lucy. Mm -hmm. And also where we feel like we belong to ourselves. So mm -hmm. I, I love what you do in the world, Jackie, but I love who you're being in the world so much. Yeah. So I'm really excited to dive into our conversation mm -hmm. today to really take what it is that you do. You really do help people get unstuck. And I love yeah. that about you. And when we're talking about navigating and planning your career as young professional, young professionals or professionals in transition, because mm -hmm. burnout leads to a lot of career transitions, folks. I am well aware of that. I'm oh, yeah. aware of that for myself, yeah. right? 
so Jackie, you know, you came into the room today and I, I checked with you. I said, how's your heart? What's going on? And you were like, well, I am really, it is heavy on my heart around the workplace, specifically around underemployment, which we know is massive guys mm -hmm. and unemployment. And you work with, you know, collegiate students, grad mm -hmm. students, you work with young professionals. You're in that transition window, right. you know, when people are stepping out into a new career for the first time, or they're transitioning, you know, from one job to the next, mm -hmm. what are some of the biggest the biggest hurdles, the biggest barriers that people are bringing to you and saying, this is a challenge, this is a problem, Jackie. Right. The number one thing is they're already much of the time in burnout. Mm -hmm. If you're in a transition, it means you just finished something else that was exhausting and you are Beyond Thank you for time. saying that. Oh my Thank goodness. Thank you so much for saying that. No one <laughs> yes. ever acknowledges that. We just finished, like, we just got a degree. We just finished a master's. We just wrapped up this huge job or project. Oh my gosh. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's it's huge. And um, for the folks that are heading into college, parents will say, I gave that person, I, you know, I gave my kid the whole summer to rest. And I'm, I'm thinking of like... Um, that's not friend Katie um, in Michigan, who's autistic, and she talked about being in burnout after college for four years. Like yeah. she could not, I think she worked, uh, I don't know how she did it. She worked a fast food job for a few hours a day and then slept the whole rest of the day. And I know people that all they did was sleep and maybe, you know, get on their phones a little bit. And they sometimes neurotypicals don't realize you know, especially parents are like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to my adult kid when I'm gone? And I got to get them on that road, you know, that that wheel to move forward and be okay. I'm not okay if, if they're not okay. And realize that they really are still needing to rest. And that they, we joke about this sometimes, they're still autistic. They turned 18 or 21. And guess what? Everything that was giving them, you know, challenges at three or four years old, at 15 years old, it still exists. You still get tired. And I have you know? 70 and 80 year old clients yeah. right now yeah. who are still autistic because they maybe just didn't know it till 10 years ago or five years ago yeah. or last year or last month. Right. But I love that you acknowledged. Now, here's the thing. You were acknowledging it. Now, my loving person who's listening <laughs> Would you please acknowledge it for yourself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we don't stop and acknowledge those pivotal moments of transition mm -hmm. in our lives. Do we, Jackie? We don't, and we need to. And I think it's part of the joy of living that you actually reflect on that hard thing you just did. You got through high school and it was really hard. Um you got through a graduate program or a college program, whatever it was, you just uh, left a job that was not suited for you and you got out in the nick of time. Um, whether they asked you to leave or you decided to leave or you were laid off, I mean, I think you still should rest and pat yourself on the shoulder because those are hard things. And the world was not created for uh, with us in mind. So, it's, it's time for reflection and it's time to reconsider what you want to have it happen next. And it's time for everything to slow down. And Rest how the heck do we do that? How do we slow down, Jackie, from your perspective, yeah. how do we slow down to start to recharge and to allow ourselves some space to number one, celebrate what we yeah. just finished right? Like actually acknowledge mm -hmm. that, do a check-in and go, okay, how am I doing right now? Yeah. Where do I want to go? Like mm -hmm. just what's the first step and what's the pace that I want to take that? I mean, how do we, how do we go from this place of like, okay, I finished that. I know mm -hmm. this is the expectations because like mm -hmm. folks, everybody in the world's got expectations and we got expectations and our expectations yeah. are usually 10 million times higher than everybody mm -hmm. else's. And we hold mm -hmm. ourselves to this really ridiculous standard within ourselves. How do we not get stuck, but also give ourselves some space? Yeah. I think one thing we do 
or should do, and you know, I've even done this with you, is figure out your burnout levels. Like you have a whole program for that. And I think that's really important. Like is, is it that you're just a little bit fried out and a little bit of rest is gonna, and you're really excited to try to go get that job and you're ready to go, but you just need to, you know, take a little downtime or really do you need significant time to calm your nervous system and relax and, um, I'm sure you're even more aware of this than I am, that it isn't like, oh, just go sleep. We know the autistic brain does not sleep well, that it's, it's you know, built differently and handles sleep differently. So it's not just going to be about sleeping. Um, you and I were talking about the need for nature. Um, that's a big replenishment for most human beings to go out there and just, like I'm a true tree hugger. Like I go braille the tree. I really do. I believe one should literally physically hug a tree. Yep. I do. <laughs> I love nature. My kids are, you know, I'm from Michigan. I live in California now. I can see the Tahoe snow caps in certain parts of our subdivision. And I show them to them every time I see them and they think I'm crazy. Just above our screen is a hummingbird feeder that if you ever see my eyes wander up, I'm watching them. Like those are those little repent replenishments is just, you know, something feeling your toes in the grass, if that feels good, whatever it is. And I like to call it the um, self-care sandwich, like taking, if you know something big is coming up, and I, I call that the meat or the cheese, like whatever it is you've got to interview, or you've got to go meet friends that you love, but you know, it's going to be jarring for you, is you rest before, and rest after. And what is rest really? Um, what did it look like? Of course, again, we talked about sleeping, but a big part of it is doing what you're passionate about. Whatever that is, if it feels like you want to be sewing, you want to be drawing, you want to be nailing, you know, something to the wall, whatever it is that means something to you. Um, I have a, a, a friend who loves chickens. She's out there with her chickens and she makes chicken buttons and chicken clothes. It's like whatever you're passionate about will replenish you. And, th and that's another way to um, help yourself uh, heal and calm your system down. Yeah. So as we're, you know, kind of talking specifically to young adults, and young mm -hmm. professionals, you know, if you might be in transition from, mm -hmm. from college or high school into work or from one early career to the next, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, that are coming up that you would say, look, this is kind of the checklist for, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you get your resume in order. Yes. You start mm -hmm. identifying some companies, but you know, that are in alignment, but what are some of those first key steps for those transitions that you feel really helps someone? And what are some of the biggest places that you were like, these are the things don't, don't really focus on these. Don't waste your time on these. I think people are maybe focusing on the wrong thing. Here's more of the impact area to focus on. Sure. So if you are in a situation where you just got out of college or you're knowing you need to change jobs, let's like kind of use those for right now, you want to be focusing most importantly, on what suits you, what, where's the next place for you that really makes sense, that we really fine tune it to what are your skills, what is your comfort level, what's going to feel good to you on the inside, trying to do uh, work that doesn't feed you and fill you um, is, is just going to burn you out again so quickly. Um, so I would say that's the one thing is that we really fine tune what it is you want to go be doing and search for it and know that it is not going to be, especially in this job climate, it's not going to be a quick situation for the parents too, that I, you know, are like writing to me when I work with their young people, like, do they have a job yet? Do they have a job yet? You know, it's like, this takes a little while to figure out. Um so it's just someone, a company or a organization that is in alignment with you as a human being. I would say yeah. that's like the big thing that comes up for me 
um, that you know you can talk to about accommodations, that you would feel comfortable being your complete self with them. And those companies, you know, are, I used to say few and far between, but they're growing. There are more and more of them out there who are trying to do a better job at this and realizing like that an interview, you know, if, if you and I are chatting it up and having a good time in conversation, that has nothing to do on whether or not we can do the job to like, you know, find that organization or company that can actually figure out from the interview what it is that you do well and where your place is in a company. That's, mm -hmm. that's a biggie that we're um, always working with. Or for my folks that are going on to graduate school, that again, where do you um, belong? Where, like I've got a, uh, a young person where it wasn't just about going to film school, it was about editing. Like that mm -hmm. is their passion. They want to take something that someone else is doing and make it beautiful. And that is their place in this world. And it's, they're so excited about it and it's where they're supposed to be, you know, and, or it's someone else raising chickens or whatever it is that you are in your little Nirvana spot. Yeah. What are some of the areas that you have found are sort of the, the traps or the, the pitfalls that somebody might be focusing on instead of those areas? Well, number one is that it's that time issue of knowing you're got to pay rent. Um, so, so it's easy to like, just go take something that could burn you out further. Like I'm thinking, I, I don't think I have a client who hasn't tried customer service <laughs> and then, you know, burned out from customer service, you know? So it's, again, it's, it's where should you be in this world and and to not, I mean, sometimes we just have to take that job because we have to support ourselves. But do, like I try as a coach to help them find the job or the work that they should be doing, even if it's just a few hours in the beginning and they're doing it as a contractor rather than going into places where they're going to be trapped, they're going to be exhausted. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think of folks that have like one example where the individual tried to be a hostess and in a busy, busy restaurant. So all these people are coming up to them and, you know, and the phone is ringing, supposed to be answering the phone too. And, and they just left in tears. Like, you know, that didn't help. Yes, we, we got them a job, but it didn't help them. They were really a mess for a couple months because of that. Um, you know, it's not serving anyone. Yeah. You know, one of the things for myself that I discovered, and this was like, I, I now look back on it and go, wow, I was so stupid smart in this. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And I was between careers yeah. and I had, you know, I had gone back to school and got some post-baccalaureate studies and it was like that in between time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not really seeing a particular job or position yeah. that aligns with where I want to be right now, but I need something because I had two little kids. Mm -hmm. I need something with some income. I need to be able to get out of my house and talk to people who are taller than three feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Cause you get that. Sure. Yeah. So what I did mm -hmm. was I went to a local temp staffing agency. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because this actually led to some beautiful things because I was able to take my legal background. I was able to take my healthcare background and they said, Oh, we have a temporary job at this hospital in the legal department doing X, Y, Z. And I was like, Oh, that would be fun. And it was just, you know, the short term project. Mm -hmm. And that actually, I didn't even, I would never have thought of it for myself. Mm -hmm. They would not have ever posted this out in the open because mm -hmm. it was temporary. It was just this little short window. Right. So I went, I did that amazing job, fell in love with the hospital, the staff, got to know everybody, you know, fast forward, mm -hmm. I end up working there with a permanent position in administration. And it's just one of those things that I think sometimes we don't think about yes. because it's like not off the, the trajectory or the path that most people lay it out. Mm -hmm. maybe talk about, and, and it, you know, there were some, a couple of little short-term jobs that I also did that gave me contrast for some clarity about what I did not want. 
Oh right? yeah. But the good thing was it wasn't any big deal because it was just for a week. Yeah. You know, or it was just for two weeks or three weeks to fill mm -hmm. in for somebody, you know, answering the phone in an air conditioning, you know, HVAC company or something. So you learn those things. You still have a little income, but you, everything can either be a lesson or a gift. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever a waste of time. Right. In my opinion, you know, but mm -hmm. if you think it sucked and it didn't give you a damn thing, okay, well, it didn't. You're right. But it's off the list. Like, you know, that's <laughs> what you're not meant to be doing or yeah. you're not meant to be with that company. And as a 60 year old, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this a little bit, but I was that Kelly girl as I went through college. Mm -hmm. The Kelly services had Kelly yeah. with all this. I remember. And I would go <laughs> in and <laughs> do the switchboard and I'd be the person, you know, hanging out while they all went to their Christmas party or whatever. And it was a great way. We talk about the fact that we, uh, our companies don't always give the right kind of interview that really is yeah, figuring is out, so like, you know, right, wh what your skills yeah. are and what you're good at. Um, boy, does a company get to see who you are and you get to see who a company is when you do temp work. You really you do find out a lot about yourself and they find out a lot about you and you them. And it's, it's, it is a beautiful way to see in. And, um, and you, I think it's hard, you know, we forget that it is hard to be a young adult human in this world and figure out what am I going to do with my life? You know, I, am I going to be a lawyer? Am I going to be a doctor? Am I going to, you know, be a teacher? What is there? And and when you do temp work or internships, you know, when you're in college, uh, you get to get, get a peek at things and figure out, you know, well, either that's off the list or, oh, I want to know a little more about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, especially when we're in transition or we're looking for what's that first sort of. Mm -hmm. a, you know, formal career step, mm -hmm. right, in the path. And I think for me, looking back now, mm -hmm. if I would have had the understanding that or the grace yeah. and just allowance for mm -hmm. myself to go, hey, I can accept a job that I think is going to be good, but mm -hmm. it, it may not be. And it may not be the be all end all. I might be there for three years, yeah. you know, and that serves me and that's okay. It doesn't yeah have to be the perfect fit right off the bat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like the Cinderella slipper for the next 50 yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't know a single solitary soul mm -hmm. other than my dad, who's 86, <laughs> who's owned his own company his whole life mostly. Yeah. Um, and autistic AF y'all. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know anyone who's stayed in the same career, the same yeah. job, position everything has been an evolution it is part of the flow it's, it's part of our our modern society right. you know and where we are jackie what are some some nuggets of insight that you'd like somebody to have that sort of along that same line of like it doesn't have to be like the cinderella slipper job it can be meet these big things and like what are some things yeah. for people to think about when they're looking for that transition change or that first job it's it's good to think about what you are good at. I, I come across a lot of wonderful writers. So, mm. you know, that's something to put on the list. Whatever it is that you you like doing and you really despise doing. It's good to know, like, mm. even if you're only in there for a bit, you still, if there's something that even on the first hour of the job, you're not going to be able to tolerate it. You just... You know, there's a beeping noise or whatever that can't be removed, whatever it is that you have a sense of what could work for you short term that you're thinking about those things. So skill sets and um, the musts, maybe it isn't the wouldn't it be nice list, but it's mm -hmm. the musts. And oh, okay. so what are some examples of some musts that that clients have had in the past? So many of my clients have been like, just please don't have me working with customers. That it's just mm -hmm. customer facing is more than their nervous system at this time and is ready for, especially if they're still right. working their way out of burnout. So that is huge um, within my clientele. Um, 
Other musts are that it's an ethical business, um, that they can at least somewhat believe in the mission and feel like you know they can hold their head up high uh, working for the organization, the company, whomever. Um, it's also important that like maybe for neurotypical, suddenly working a night job when you're a morning person is not gonna be a huge deal, but we know our clientele, our, our people, um, if, if you can't get up till noon, having a 5 a.m. job, it, it's going to be a disaster, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, you got to work with your peak performance times. <laughs> yep, yep. You just have to pay attention to things like that, right? So um, when I'm coaching, that's what we talk about is like, what are the musts that we're going to look for here? What are, you know, what, what do you have to have in order to survive as a human when you get right. there? And then the other stuff can just be, if it's, if it's wonderful, it's the icing on the cake. Um, that you get to uh, use every skill that you love or whatever it is, you know, that you, you, you love everyone that's in your department or whatever, you know, that's all wonderful. But um, more than anything is that the, the pay is fair. You're getting a chance to look at an organization and, and decide if it's right for you. And you're, you know, able to pay your rent and without going into more burnout. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But Jackie, how can people work with you? How do you, how do people get in contact with you here at Sacred Spaces Coaching? You know, what's the first step? Like if they're like, Jackie is my flavor of jam. She's mm -hmm. my person. Like, I feel like she's the person that can help me right now. What's the first step for somebody? How do they get in touch with um, you? They just want to go you? to my website. It is sacredspacecoaching.net. That's the easy, easiest way to find me. And there's just like a little form on there. You just give me your first name and your phone number or go to the Calendarly and pick a time to chat with me and we'll talk and like see it. if we're a good fit. Easy peasy, living squeezy, yeah. folks. You got don't, it. don't stay stuck. Get, let, let Jackie help you get unstuck and yeah. move to the next place. Right. I love that. Thank you so much for all the mm. incredible insights today. The things to think about, the things that maybe we're focusing on that aren't serving us and right. these incredible things that maybe we haven't considered yet around what is a must and what it was, a, what would be nice kind of thing. Mm. And some ways that we can start just dipping our toe into finding that next career choice, that next or first step for us as we're moving through navigating what's the best fit, what really supports me, where can I shine and where can it be joyful, light and fun, right? You got it. Now that Absolutely. is not, and the life is not always like light, joyful and fun 24 mm -hmm. seven folks. But when you have a majority of things where you learn to move through life in a whole new way with a new lens, then those things when stuff does happen, because it inevitably happens, mm -hmm. trust me, I'm like the joy queen and stuff happens in my life all the time. But when mm -hmm. it does, it feels different. Mm -hmm. I handle it and, and approach it differently. And now out of burnout, almost five years, we're, we're in August, we're moving into November, which is my anniversary. So we're almost at five years, oh, half a decade. This is massive. And not, you not only that, it's a half a decade, which is a five and, and I just turned 50 in May. So there we go. <laughs> I feel like there should be a coin for you. That we hand to you. you know? coin? I want like the ticker tape parade. What are you talking yeah. about? Go big. I'd be the first <laughs> leading it with, with the band. That Thank is you so, so much for being here. Yep. Guys, if you suspect you might be in burnout or you're not quite sure and you're just wondering, go take the spicy burnout quiz. Mm -hmm. Go over to whittingtonwellbeing.com. Pop in your name, pop in your email address, hop in, take the quiz. It takes about three minutes max. We look at all the different elements. There's different layers of burnout that most inventories don't consider. We tell you, hey, you're in burnout or you're not. You're doing better than you think you are. You might just be having a tough day. And that happens mm -hmm. too. Or if you're a one to a five, what that pepper level is, then I'm going to give you some, some great information to help you start navigating to get out of burnout, to get to your best thrive. Because I truly believe in my passion and mission in life is to guide you to your personal power and to your leadership. I will lead you to your own leadership. I will not guide, I will guide you, but I will not be your leader. I will not make your decisions. This is about you making the choices that are best for you and only you can do it. But we don't make the very best decisions when we're burnt out. 
in order to make the very best decisions to have the life that you want. Let's get you to the best thriving so that you're making those decisions that, that are in alignment with you that are your joy. Thanks for being here today. I'll see you next week. You showed up today in every single way. Take a breath and I'll hear you stay. Thank you for being here. You're more than enough already. Just as you are my friend. Take it easy. You are worthy never to 